China's shipbuilding industry is a monster. This industry builds 40% of the world's ships, has been in trouble since the global financial crisis strike in 2008. As the demand is low due to striving economies around the world, the industry also suffers from the difficulties of overcapacity and lack of financing channels. Zhushan Wuzhu Ship Repairing and Building Company Limited, a shipyard in East China's Zhejiang province, has reportedly become the first state-owned shipbuilder to go bankrupt, submerged in the problems of overcapacity and sluggish demand, which are major issues that domestic shipbuilders will continue to face. Hello everyone, welcome to World of China, a channel to explore China. In today's video, we are talking about China's shipbuilding giant Wuzhu Ship Repairing and Building Company Limited, which has gone bankrupt for not paying $141 billion. So stay tuned and give this video a big thumbs up. The court said it has frozen the assets of Wuzhou Ship Repairing and Building, established in 2001. WSR had a registered capital of 50 million yuan or $7.68 million, according to the court filing. The shipbuilder has debts of 911 million yuan, including payments for workers and offshore support vessel suppliers, taxes, and four unfinished vessels. A total assets of 534 million yuan, as its financial report showed. Zhushan Wuzhou Ship Repairing and Building Company, or WSR, an affiliate of state-run Zhejiang Shipping Group, started legal procedures for dealing with debt problems, according to the press, referring to a report from the Zhushan Intermediate People's Court. The first creditors' meeting is expected to be held in about two weeks, according to media reports. Shen Daxi, the vice security of a branch of the Chinese Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers in Zhejiang, told the Global Times Sunday night that the shipbuilding industry has been struggling in recent years, in part due to the overall economic slowdown. The scattering of the company comes despite the recent resurgence in shipbuilding orders and China's overall leadership in the industry. The Shanghai International Maritime Information Research Center reported that the shipyard is shutting down for the second time in its history due to heavy financial debts. They reported that insufficient profits from shipyard operations in recent years led to the decision to stop operations. The shipyard announced that it has discharged its labor contracts with employees and will stop all of its operations and production by the end of the month. Tianjin Xinjiang had relocated its operations in 2017, focusing both on new ship construction up to 500,000 tons and ship repair for ships up to 300,000 tons. It could build ships up to about 1,000 feet in length. The shipyard, which has been in business since 1940, was previously restructured around 20 years ago. It declared bankruptcy in 2000, but revamped its activities the following year. In 2017, Tianjin Xinjiang migrated its activities, focusing both on new ship construction up to 500,000 tons and ship maintenance for ships up to 300,000 tons. It was able to construct vessels up to a length of 1,000 feet. Tianjin finished building the 39,000 GT Global Mercy for Stena Roro back in June 2021. Mercy ships will begin operations with a vessel in 2022, making it the world's largest civilian hospital ship. It's being described as the most technologically sophisticated ship of its type, having been specifically designed for Mercy ships. A total of six operating rooms, 200 beds, a laboratory, and general outpatient clinics, as well as eye and dental clinics are available at the ship. The hospital department onboard Global Mercy covers an area of more than 75,000 square feet. As we know, Fuzhou Ship Repairing and Building is the first state-owned firm to go bankrupt since the shipbuilding industry started slowing last year. Another privately-owned company, Mingde Heavy Industry Group, went under on July 31st. Also, other state-owned shipbuilders have indicated that they are in deep trouble. St. Marine Corporation Limited and Wuhu Shipyard Company Limited have both said in December they are on the verge of bankruptcy. From January to November 2015, the nation's shipbuilding output was up about 10.9% to 36.2 million deadweight tons or DWT, while the number of orders for new vessels decreased about 59.1% to 23.19 million DWT, according to a report released by the China Association of the National Shipbuilding Industry or CANSI on December 15. Officials of WSR, as a traditional state-owned enterprise or SOE said, lacked innovative management making its operations even more challenging, particularly when more flexible and versatile corporate strategies were needed. 
When the Global Times attempted to contact the shipyard for comment on this gloomy situation, a recording said that the phone service had been suspended because the bill had not been paid. The Kansi report noted that profits of major shipbuilders had slumped about 23.4% in the first 11 months of 2015. The association found that 88 companies recorded about 268 billion yuan in revenues, down 1.5%, and 3.6 billion yuan in profits, down about 23.4% both on a year-on-year -year basis. Both SOEs and small private companies have been affected by the global trade slowdown, which has also had a vital impact on shipping and shipbuilding, and companies are heading into a rough year. Chen, the vice secretary, predicted that more alliance and acquisition cases would occur in the shipping and shipbuilding industries in recent years, and more shipyard operators would face bankruptcy. There are already signs that other state-owned shipbuilders are facing financial problems. The private sector is not doing much better. Following the demise last year of Rongsheng Heavy Industry Group, at one point the country's largest shipbuilder, Chinese shipbuilders have seen orders for new vessels drop over the first three quarters of 2015. Jiangsu Eastern Heavy Industries, Jiajiang Judger Shipbuilding, and Jiajiang Zhengye Shipbuilding, everybody is in trouble. The fall-off was mainly due to a lack of orders for bulk carriers. Less than 60 orders were placed around the world in the first seven months of the year 90% less than in the same period of the year before, according to numbers from shipping analyst Clarkson Research. Three major shipyards in Zhejiang province yesterday said they're seeking investors to help them restructure out of bankruptcy. The three companies owed 1.7 billion yuan or 262 million US dollars, but had assets with a book value of 670 million yuan in houses, land tenure, docks, and wharves, according to recent data. They had until June 15 to look for investors to provide a cash deposit of 5 million yuan. But the three companies are not obliged to continue operations in shipbuilding or maritime activities as affirmed clearly by their prospectus. Staff of the China Classification Society said, Chinese shipyards rarely have sufficient funds for shipbuilding to heal the slowing economy. The problem of oversupply has long plagued the domestic shipbuilding industry, and that is set to continue. The ruling casts a cloud over the already stumbling domestic shipbuilding industry which has struggled since the global financial crisis of 2008. Experts say the Chinese shipbuilding industry is in the midst of a chilly winter and will go bankrupt in the coming years. During the 13th five-year plan period, 2016 to 2020, global demand for new vessels is estimated to be 80 million to 90 million DWT every year. However, Chinese shipbuilding capacity will remain at about 80 million DWT, according to the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, or MIIT. According to sources, Tianjin's activities would likely be transferred to other divisions of China's state-owned China State Shipbuilding Corporation, which is also experiencing a makeover to enhance performance. Dalian Shipbuilding Industry is anticipated to acquire Tianjin's shipbuilding industry, while Shanghaiguan Shipbuilding will take over the ship repair business. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, then give this video a big thumbs up and share it. For more exciting videos, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. I'll be back with another exciting video soon. Till then, check out our channel for more exciting videos and stay tuned.